Learning Measure TV, a science and engineering podcast with emphasis on measurement, brought to you by David Archer and LearningMeasure.com. Episode 24, Go With The Flow. Hello, uh, I'm David Archer. Uh, I'm the owner of LearningMeasure.com and LearningMeasure.tv. Uh, LearningMeasure.com is a subscription-based training service uh, associated with the podcast. Uh, if you're interested in uh, uh, our pro- product here, uh, register, you get two weeks free, and then after that, it's $5 a month for access to all the courses. Um, and if you're an employer that's interested in uh, um, our services, we'd like to talk to you as well. I also would like to introduce a new course that was added to the catalog, uh, Quality 153 QC Tools uh, Check Sheets. This is a, uh, the second in a series of eight courses that have been added to the catalog um, con- concerning um, the seven basic tools of quality uh, as defined by Ishikawa. Uh, with regards to last week's uh, call for retired people to be on the podcast or people near retirement, we got our first taker. Uh, in a few weeks, we're going to be interviewing somebody who's uh, a retired uh, engineer and scientist. Um, we'll be interviewing him. Um, like I said, uh, anybody out there who uh, is retired or near retired, we would like to get your story and maybe get, have you give a technical talk. We want to. Uh, provide a service by doing some, getting your story and passing on knowledge to the next generation for those of you who are retired or near retirement. Okay, as I said, I'm working on a series of courses on um, uh, the seven basic uh, quality tools as defined by this guy, Ishikawa. Uh, Ishikawa is best known for his invention of quality circles and uh, something called the Ishikawa diagram or the cause and effect diagram, which is one of the, that he invented in 1982, which he defined as one of the seven basic, seven basic tools of quality. I mean, there's hundreds of quality tools out there. These are just very basic ones that, are, that can be used uh, for, for most processes. I mean, a lot of processes need more sophisticated tools, but this is, these are the basic tools. The other reason I'm, actually the main reason I'm putting together these courses and giving this talk is is it's it's part of the ASQ, a Certified Calibration Technician Body of Knowledge, and I'm developing a series of courses related to that at the moment. Well, first of all, a little bit more about Ishikawa. Uh, Ishikawa was basically responsible for taking uh, Dr. Deming and Dr. Duran's concepts and implementing them in Japan. Um, and he expanded on them and wrote his own books on the subject. Um, and the se- and one of his books, he defines the seven basic tools of quality as the cause and effect diagram, also called Nishikawa diagram, the flow chart, the check sheet, the histogram, the Pareto diagram, the scatter diagram, and the control chart. Um, these are introduced in, the, in another one of the courses in this is series, Quality 150, Quality Tools 1. Um, measurements, which is basically the emphasis of the podcast here and the, uh, the training site as well, are always inside of a process, and the measurement itself is a process. So um, these tools are, can be applied to measurement processes. Um, and uh, for the most part, I would say these tools um, are communication tools. In fact, what I want to do in this particular podcast is talk about one tool in particular, and that's the flow chart. Uh, and uh, in the next several episodes, I'm planning on going over some of the other base seven basic quality tools. Uh, and I, hopefully I can do that in three or four episodes. But we're going to start out with the flowchart. Uh, flowcharts, the symbols used to define flowcharts 
can be find, found in ISO 5807. That's where they're defined. Um, and, uh, you know, there, there's a lot of flowchart symbols. You know, the computer science folks like to say that they were, um, had invented the basic the idea of a flowchart. But really, it was invented uh, in, I th think it was the 30s, uh, to def actually to define processes. Um, but uh, we're going to go over some of the basic symbols. One thing that's basic about a flowchart is it is a communications tool, in my mind. Its main function is to communicate maybe to your non-technical management or maybe to some bean counter or somebody else, maybe somebody responsible for quality control who doesn't actually have knowledge of your process. It's a communication tool. That's not to be said it couldn't be used, you know, to help as, as you know, if you're designing a process or trying to figure out an algorithm or something, it might not be useful for you to write down a flowchart. But I think its primary use is a communications tool. For instance, if you're in a room of people and you want to define a process or try to figure out what something that, you know, how you're going to do something, putting a, a flowchart on a whiteboard or something and have people interact is probably a, a not a bad way of defining a process or capturing a process. It's just a way, it's a graphical way of, of capturing a process and the process flow. Well, we're going to go over some of the symbols. Now, first of all, all processes pretty much need to start as a beginning and an end. And uh, the symbols that are used for beginning and end are basically um, kind of a box with a semicircle on each end. Sometimes you'll see a, a, an oval. And usually uh, you'll have words in here like start, and then you might have another one to end a process that might have the word end in it. Okay, that is uh, the symbols used for starting and ending of process. Things in inside boxes are process steps. So uh, let's talk about, let's say the process for a calibration or test house, the basic level process. It might be something like, you might have receive item, and then you might test item, and then you might, let's say you might write some sort of report, that could be a label, this could be a certificate, this could be whatever, and then, you, then you would uh, ship the item. And then that's the end of the process. Again, things in boxes are process steps. Each box could have its own flowchart because each process step is itself a process. Now, to show process flow, you connect things with lines. So lines show how the, you flow through the process from one step to another if they're sequential. So this might be your process for a, the basic process for a, a testing facility, let's say. Now, you know, these might, uh, that, that gives you uh, a basic step, but what happens if you have to make a decision? Well, there's a symbol for that. It's a diamond. And the way that works is if you, whenever you have to make a branch in, in, the, in the process, you're going to have a diamond. Oh, by the way, in the process steps, there needs to be a words inside the box that describe the action or whatever that process step is. They have to be an action word in there of some sort of verb. 
like receive, test, print, you know, that sort of thing. Um, a diamond is used for a symbol for a decision. Now, one of the things, the, one of the um, properties of a decision is one input, at least two outputs. So you have inside the diamond, you have a question. And then the answer to the question is a label on the lines coming out of it. Like, for instance, did unit pass? You write some question in the diamond. And then you have maybe two branches coming out, yes and no. And those might go to other processes. So let's do uh, a process that has a decision in it. Let's say the process for waking up in the morning. And okay, you have a start in the process. This we're going to define the wake up process. So the first thing that happens, let's say, is the uh, alarm rings, let's say. Your alarm goes off. Hmm. Then you have a decision to make. Am I ready to get up? If the answer is no, You're going to hit snooze. And then you're going to wait for the alarm to go off again. If the answer is yes, you get up. And that ends the process. All right. So there is a basic process with a decision step in it. You notice here there's a loop in this process and you, it can go any number of times. Um, you know, maybe, maybe that's not what you want. Maybe you want another decision in here that stop breaks you out of this loop. Like maybe have a loop counter. Say, eh, have I hit my snooze 10 times? And if you've hit it 10 times, you break out of the loop and get up regardless because you're probably going to be late for work now. So, yeah, sometimes you, in your process, you, can, you realize you'll have loops that you don't know how many times you're going through. Okay, the other thing that um, you, can, you can do in a flowchart is um, take input and output. Now, input can come from outside the process, so it's not going to be part of the actual process flow. Oh, before I get too far, the process flow. In a process, regardless of which branch you take in a process, there has to be a path from the start to the end of the process, or else your process is not very well defined. Just a rule when you're coming up with a flow chart. No matter how many branches there are in the process, they actually, all the branches have to have a path to the end of the process. If not, you don't have a complete process. Now I'm going to go, there is a symbol that's used for data, and it's a parallelogram. Parallelogram is a thing where all the sides are parallel, but this is a parallelogram that doesn't have right angles in it. That represents data uh, regardless of the source. There are specialized symbols if you want to have uh, specialized uh, input types or output types. But general data that uses input or output to a process is in a parallelogram. And I'm going to give an example now of where, how data might be part of a process. In that wake up process I did a little while ago, uh, let's see. 
um, there was a, that process presupposed that some other process took place first, namely that you set your alarm the night before. Well, I'm going to go over how you set, the, set your alarm now. So we're going to do a process start. Well, the first thing you probably want to do is either check or set the time on your clock. Check or set time. Well, for that, you need an external input. So the input's going to be the current time. That's actually come somewhere outside of your process. So you need the current time to check or set your time. And then you're going to um, set alarm time. Okay. Well, what do you need for that? Well, you need some you need a wake up time, what time you want to get up. But that's not quite all you probably want. You probably also want another process step here. You want to probably subtract snooze allowance. <laughs> and then set your alarm. Then you want to turn your alarm on. And then you end the process. So this is not unusual also, is that you have to do some sort of processing step on, on input to the process. You might have to do that on an output to the process too. I'm going to have to change markers here. This marker seems to be dying. Okay, then you can get some fairly complicated uh, flow charts. This is not a very complicated one. But um, sometimes you have a thing where it's difficult to, uh, you might have several places where you enter and exit parts of the, the flow chart. And the symbol that's used for that, for, for what's called, a, is a circle. Now inside the circle will be like a number or a letter indicating a branch. So what you could do like in, in your process is you could have, you know, some sort of complicated thing. You have a start and you have, I don't know, some steps in here. Not put, then you have, might have some decisions and you might have, you know, more steps. Um, You know, it might be very complicated. Um, you might have to go and do some other decision. You know, some question here. And then, you know, I don't know, maybe, maybe here you go some other way. And we we'll, won't finish this out, but maybe at this point you don't, you want to go back to somewhere over there. Well, you could draw a line all the way over there, but the other thing you could do is say, okay, this is one, and you say, okay, one enters here. So, so a circle with some sort of label or in it tells you to go to some other place in the uh, flowchart. In this case, one, one. Now, there can only be one input into the process for each label. Otherwise, you, you, can't, you don't know what it is. Okay, those are the basic flowchart symbols that could actually define any process. Now, there are other specialized symbols that sometimes are used in flowcharts, 
And I'm only going to go, I'm going to go over a few of them now. I'm not going to go over all of them because there's a fair amount defined in the ISO standard. But I'll go over some of them. A trapezoid. A trapezoid has two parallel lines, but this is a trapezoid with a longer side on the top. That is a symbol that's meant to be a manual operation. So in an anim, anim, uh, automated process, a step that requires a human in the loop is, is, is represented by a trapezoid with a, the longer side on the top. Okay. Boxes are process steps that you might run across a box that looks like this. With two lines on either side. That's um, uh, a, called a predefined process that's defined somewhere else. This could be like a standard operating procedure, or maybe a, uh, it could define, be a subroutine if this is a, a, a defining a, a computer algorithm or something. But that, that represents a predefined process. Um, another one that you might see. Um, is uh, something that looks like this, where it ha you have uh, something like that. This is a, a square with a wavy line. It's, it's meant to um, represent a document. I mean, I guess that's sort of like a piece of paper torn off a printer or something. But uh, when you see this symbol, that's a symbol for a document of some sort. It could be a certificate or a, a you know, procedure or whatever, a report of some sort. Um, the other thing that you can do with flowcharts um, is you can draw them in such a way, for instance, you could have um, processes that, that uh, steps are followed by different organizations or different functions within a lab or something like you may have, well in any event, you, what you can do is you draw vertical lines in your flow chart and you might have like a, you know, a start here and it's, let's say this is your, represents your receiving inspection department or whatever. And they might have whatever their process is. You know, it can be, you know, as complicated as you like. You know, whatever. And then you get done. And then you go over to whatever, the test lab, and it goes through its process, whatever it is. You know, it might have loops. It might do all kinds of weird stuff. Then you might have, uh, you know, your, uh, you know, shipping department again or some other thing, do some other process, whatever it is, and then your end. So sometimes it's useful if you have different organizations doing different functions in this overall flowchart or different people that you sometimes draw some vertical lines and separate your flowchart and have your flow go between the different departments. That sometimes is useful um, for your flowchart. Um, okay, that's pretty much uh, all I wanted to talk about this time. Depending on whether or not I have the interview, the next, uh, well, okay. What I plan on doing with the interviews is when I do get my in interview people here, I will create, uh, put out an, uh, an episode. And if I happen to have one of these uh, ready, I'll put out two. One with the interview and one with this, the topic that I was going on. So the next time I will go over one of the quality control tools, uh, one of the seven, or maybe multiple. Um, and I'm going to do just a series on, on these for, for the moment. 
Um, but like I said, if you are, have a suggestion on what you would like to see on the, the podcast, send us an email at suggestions at learningmeasure.tv. Uh, if you have any questions you like asked, uh, send it to questions at learningmeasure.tv. And uh, you, those can be videos too. If you want to send me a video question or a video suggestion, feel free. I'd like to put it on. If you want to tell your story and send it to me, you can do that too. Uh, send it to uh, vendors at uh, learningmeasure.tv. If you are a vendor or that has a product you want to um, uh, talk about, or if you're one of these retired folks who want to have their story told, you also send it to that email address. Also, if you are a consultant or you want to uh, talk about your services, uh, send it to the same email. I'm also interested in technical talks. I'd even be willing if you sent me a video of something that you would like us to put on the, the podcast, we, we might consider it. Um, that's it well, I wanted to talk about today, so we'll talk to you next time. Bye. Thank you.